Let's take a look at the top headlines first. Women vendors drive against shopkeepers' price hike. Congress will play a major role to restore peace in Manipur, says AICC General Secretary Mukul Wasnik. Congress decides to appoint 75-year-old Siddharamaya as Chief Minister of Karnataka. And curfew relaxed in Imphal from 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. Hello and welcome to LA TV English News. I'm Utpala Longjam. Before giving you the news, we request you to follow the SOP given by the government. Wear face masks when out in public, wash hands regularly and maintain a minimum distance of six feet between one person and another. LA TV also requests you to get vaccinated in time to protect ourselves from this virus and play a part in the fight against COVID-19. Now the news in detail. In relation to the recently erupted violent communal clash in Manipur, the unfounded rise in price of essential commodities by shopkeepers has been highly condemned by the women vendors of Imakaitel and they went on a drive to check the shops in the areas around Imakaitel. They have stated that they disapprove taking advantage of the situation and hiking the price of essential commodities when people in the state are suffering hardships as a consequence of the violent communal clash. They've asked all shopkeepers to put up a price list and to take owners of their actions in case they have been found to increase the price. They stated that since the government has failed to act, it is time the women vendors will take up action against the current situation. General Secretary of All India Congress Committee, AICC, Mukul Wasnik, has said that all effort will put on to restore normalcy in Manipur. He said this during a press meet held at Congress Bhavan today. The press was, meet was attended by AICC members Bhakta Charandas, Ajay Kumar, MPCC President K. Mega Chandra, CLP leader O. Ibobi, many leaders of the party. Mukul Wasnik further said that at the moment Manipur is burning, however, not a single word from both the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah. In the past, there were frequent visits of ministers in Manipur when BJP government came to power. Houses, churches and many properties have been damaged and destroyed, but the government is 
remains a silent spectator. The Congress doesn't want to politicize on the issue. He also mentioned that yesterday a fact-finding team of Congress party had met the governor of Manipur and explained the situation in detail. Though the present government of Manipur remains silent, the Congress party will put all efforts to bring peace and tranquility in the state, he added. Arms and ammunition, the way it was looted, more than a thousand guns, more than 6,000, 7,000 rounds, they were looted. And the recovery is far less. Weapons are there in the hands of a large number of people. Situation is still extremely tense. Government is seen to be wanting to restore normalcy. We don't see any efforts in bringing back peace and harmony. Large number of places of worship. Figures start from 150 to almost 300. Churches have been burned down, demolished, destroyed, vandalized. A few temples have also been destroyed. Such things have not happened in independent India anywhere. The number is too big in this unfortunate situation. The Prime Minister is silent. Not a word from the Prime Minister. The Home Minister whose responsibility is to see that constitutional values are upheld, the duties are performed according to the provisions of the Constitution. Nothing, not a word from the Home Minister. Earlier, Every now and then, the union ministers were visiting Manipur. Maybe one every week. That was a PR exercise. But since the 3rd of May, when this unfortunate situation has happened, not a single minister has come to Manipur. Manipur is burning. And like it is said that when Rome was burning, the emperor was playing with fiddle. So, we are extremely concerned. We don't want to politicize this situation. Every community has a stake in peace in Manipur. If peace is restored, every community will be able to flourish. Today, government employees belonging to different communities find difficult to perform their duties because some community employee feel that if I go to that place, I may not be safe. So this is the type of situation and uh, we are here to appeal to all sections to restore peace. We are here to assure that every possible cooperation from the Congress party will be there to provide normalcy in the state of Manipur. In a midnight breakthrough to the stalemate over the top job in Karnataka, Congress has decided to appoint 75-year-old Siddharamaya as Chief Minister and D.K. Shivakumar as his deputy in the southern state. The oath-taking ceremony is to take place in Bengaluru on May 20th. The formula was arrived at about 2 a.m. in Congress President Malikarjun Kharge's residence. This followed tense negotiations between Shivakumar, who was not ready to stand down, and the party High Command, among whom Sonia Gandhi is believed to have played a crucial role in turning him around. Announcing the decision, senior Congress leader K.C. Venugopal said after taking the opinion of the MLAs as and consultations with Sonia and Rahul, Congress President Malikarjun Kharge has decided that Siddharamaya will be Chief Minister of Karnataka. D.K. Shivakumar will be Deputy Chief Minister. He will be the only Deputy CM. Karnataka CM designated Siddharamaya and his deputy to be D.K. Shivakumar led a Congress delegation late on Thursday and met Governor Thawar Chan Gelot to stake claim to form the next government. This came after the Congress Legislative Party formally elected Siddharamaya as its leader. The governor accepted their claim and invited them to take oath on Saturday, 20, May 20th. Shivakumar moved the proposal to elect Siddharamaya as the Legislative Party leader after the commencement of the meeting and it was supported by all the 135 MLAs. Senior leaders including Party President Malikarjun Kharge, Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi and Chief Ministers of the Congress ruled states are expected to attend the oath taking ceremony. The Congress has also invited like minded parties and their leaders, including Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, Telangana CM Chandrasekhar Rao, West Bengal CM Mamta Banerjee, Odisha CM Naveen Patnaik, to the swearing in. Invitation has also been extended to several other opposition leaders, including Sitaram Yechuri, Uddhav Thakre, Sharad Pawar, Farooq Abdullah, and Akhilesh Yadav.
In support of the call given by Coordinating Committee on Manipur Integrity, Kokomi, for mass democratic protests to condemn activities of cookie Sioux outfits and oppose the demand for separate administration of cookie tribes, mass sit-in protests were held in different places of Manipur on Thursday. Speaking in this regard, Kokomi member C.H. Romeo conveyed that they want peace and not chaos, but will remain idle, will never remain idle if attempts are made to disintegrate the unity of Manipur, and also asked why the 10 cookie MLAs have not been disqualified till now. Around 22 bunkers occupied by cookie militants under suspension of Operation Sioux around Wakanfai village were destroyed in an operation carried out by 18 Assam rifles and a new AR outpost established at the nearby Sadu village. As per sources, after an AR soldier got killed in an attack by cookie militants under Sioux on May 10, 18 AR deployed at Dolaitabi have been conducting operation in the area. On receiving information about presence of cookie militants in Wakanfai area located further from Letan Pokpi, another operation was carried out from 11.30 a.m. till 4 p.m. on Thursday, during which 22 bunkers set up and occupied by cookie militants around five villages of Wakanfai were destroyed. However, there were no reports of any arrests. District magistrates of different districts have relaxed curfew imposed under CRPC 144 today in view of the improvement in law and order situation across the state. The curfew currently imposed in Imphal East and Imphal West districts have been relaxed from 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. today. Many people came out to purchase essential items during the curfew relaxation. Moreover, many vehicles were also seen flying on the road. Four BGP MLAs who earlier resigned from their respective administration posts in order to register their dissent against Chief Minister N. Birin have also joined the team of 34 non-Cookie MLAs in demanding non-extension of suspension of operation agreement signed with Cookie Militants. In a joint memorandum submitted to Union Home Minister Amit Shah, Lang Tabal MLA Karam Sham, Hairok MLA T.H. Radhi Sham, Wang Jing Tintha MLA, Pao Nam Brojain and Uripok MLA K. H. Rakhumani said that they were never informed about the meeting and signature campaign of MLAs regarding non-extension of Sioux agreement with cookie militants. They said they too shared the same opinion with the people of Manipur regarding the demand for non-extension of Sioux agreement with the cookie militants as this may challenge the unity and integrity of Manipur, stated the memorandum, while seeking constant intervention by Union Home Minister to restore peace and normalcy in the state at the earliest. Copies of the memorandum were forwarded to the Governor, Chief, Minister, Chief Secretary and Security Advisor to the Government of Manipur. The United Naga Council, UNC, on Tuesday held a consultative meeting with Naga leaders from Manipur amid the ongoing ethnic clashes in the state that have led to loss of lives and properties. According to reliable sources, around 300 Naga leaders, including intellectuals and representatives from various civil society organizations and stakeholders, gathered at TNK Hall at the Hazan, Senapati district on Tuesday. No concrete solution or resolution was taken by the members present in the meeting, but the final resolution will be taken during the UNC's presidential meeting, which will be held soon. Meanwhile, a nine-member peace committee had been constituted under the UNC to initiate and uphold peace in the state amid ethnic and communal violence. Former UNC President Ko John, a co-convener of peace committee, stated that they met Kokomi on May 10 and conveyed to the valley-based apex body to restore peace in the state. He stated that there should be a dialogue to bring a mutual understanding between the two communities. He further stated that he called on the governor of Manipur, Anusu Yawiki, and security advisor Kuldeep Singh and appealed to them to deploy central security forces, especially along the national highways and vulnerable areas, like the foothills and bordering areas of the two communities. The recent safe return of 124 displaced civilians to Moray facilitated by Assam Rifles has been further enhanced to their, escorted to their native villages in Imphal successfully. This effort, supported by local community leaders, administ civil administration, marks a significant step towards normalcy 
and hope in the region as the affected individuals now have the opportunity to rebuild their lives and foster inter-community harmony. Assam Rifles played a crucial role in ensuring the safe return of these displaced individuals. They provided essential relief assistance, including food, shelter and medical aid, while also ensuring their security and escorting back them back safely to Imphal. The return of displaced Indians is a positive sign of healing and progress. The unwavering dedication of Assam Rifles has significantly contributed to the normalization of the situation in the region as they work towards rebuilding trust and fostering unity among the local populace. Assam Rifles extended medical assistance to remote villages requiring medical aid and provided daily essential items and water to various relief camps during the ongoing crisis in the state of Manipur. A number of rescue operations were conducted and medical assistance was organized to provide health assistance, checkup and treatment to the unattended patients from remote villages of New Kathil Manbi. The displaced civilians in relief camps at Pearson Mun, <coughs> Gangpi Mual, Compound Weng and M Songyal were provided with daily essential items, medical aid and water. Medical team also conducted lectures to civilians wherein personal hygiene and stress management issues were addressed. The villagers appreciated and extended their gratitude towards the initiative taken by Assam Rifles for the welfare of patients who are unable to visit and purchase the medicines. It's time for a short break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Babina Diagnostics. Manipur da ihan hanba oina ing sok lising amaga chama pal marifuhum doida linkat ki. Masina, awang nong pok bharat da yamna pak chaung na miyoi bagi ana layeng da darkar lak pa makhal kaya ki chang ying sing pang to i. Mayam dugi marak da amatang palabada radiological investigation su mai pak na pang to kli. Wana hona jaba miyoi bagi sebani kana angam batak da laibak thira ba ana ayek nang labak kaya ki mating pang jaba si sakhang bidu na awang nong pok ta ihan hanba oina NABL ki accreditation pibira ki. Miyam gi potha fam ngai na fam testo fam report law fam gi awaba du kokhanduna chang fam hang fam potha fam gari parking cafeteria yauna marang kai na laizara ba unit ama oina miyam gi seba tawjeri unit asida thamjeri ba matam gi darkar oirak ba equipment singdi 1.5 tesla mri 128 slice ct scanner mammography texa scanner digital x-ray luinana hematology Clinical Chemistry, Amadi, Clinical Pathology, Immunology, Microbiology, Molecular Biology, Amasung, Immunohistochemistry Studies Ki, Masing Yamlaba Automated Analyzers. Welcome you all to UNACO School Channel in Far East, an exclusive co educational residential school located on a sprawling 50 acres campus just 24 kilometers away from Imphal City. The school will be affiliated to CBSE New Delhi. Academic session will begin on 1st April 2023 for classes 4 to 8. Registration commit visa open for 2023 and 24 session. Welcome back. You're watching Elite TV English News. PM Narendra Modi on Friday left for Japan to attend the G7 summit scheduled to be held from May 19th to 21st in Hiroshima. A video has surfaced online showing PM Modi boarding a plane for Japan. After his trip to Japan, PM Modi will visit Papua New Guinea and Australia. He'll reportedly have more than 40 engagements during his three-nation tour. Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur on Friday administered the oath of office to senior advocate K.V. Vishwanathan and Justice Prashant Kumar Mishra as Supreme Court judges. With the two new appointments, SC will function at its total strength of 34 judges. Vishwanathan is in line to become CJI from August 12, 2030 to May 25, 2031. A 59-year-old Indian climber aiming to set a new world record of becoming Asia's first woman on a pacemaker to scale Mount Everest died after falling sick at the base camp. Suzanne Leopoldina Jesus, who was admitted to a hospital, was asked to abandon the attempt after failing to maintain normal speed during the acclimatization exercise at the base camp.
And now in sports news, Rafael Nadal has decided not to take part in the French Open due to injury and will not be defending his title at Roland Garros. This is the first time since the Spaniard sealed the first of the French Open titles in 2005 that Nadal will not be playing the Grand Slam this year. On Thursday, in a news conference at his tennis academy in Mallorca, Nadal also stated that 2024 will be his last in professional tennis. The 36-year-old legend has not played ever since his, he sustained a hip injury in January during his second round loss at the Australian Open against Mackenzie McDonnell. Talking about last year's French Open, he came out of a niggling foot injury and defeated Casper Ruud and became the oldest champion in tournament history. Nadal also talked about his plan, which is to give his body some time to recuperate and also admitted that it, was, it can take up to three months and as a result, it will rule him out from this year's Wimbledon. For Elite TV News Channel, contact the email address info at elitetv.in or 940-289-0982 and subscribe to Elite TV YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter for more information about the channel. And now the top headlines once again. Women vendors drive against shopkeepers price hike. Congress will play a major role to restore peace in Manipur, says AICC General Secretary Mukul Wasnik. Congress decides to appoint 75-year-old Siddharamaya as Chief Minister of Karnataka. And curfew relaxed in Imphal from 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's all we have for now. Thank you for watching Elite TV English News. Take care and stay safe.